Hello, I'm Sky Taylor, and thank you very much for watching Coffee with Sky. Gives you a chance to go get a cup of coffee, relax, and we'll we're going to go over a few questions that uh, viewers just like you had. Now, I just want to tell you that um, anything I express is strictly my opinion. It's just my opinion, so take it for what it's worth. Make sure you get a cup of coffee, and let's go over some of the questions here. We'll start right off. Um, Sugar Bun wrote, would the piece being on canvas board affect the price? Well, what she wants to know is, if I paint, if you paint on canvas board, is it going to affect the, the price of the painting? Uh, yes, it will. What happens is that in the artist community and in the art world, it's less desirable to paint on canvas board. It is. And if you try to get that into a gallery, it might not happen. Not unless you frame it. That's the only way to maybe get around it. But yes, it is less desirable. Now, I always recommend that when you're very first starting out, paint on canvas board. Paint a few paintings on canvas board. They're inexpensive to buy, and it gives you, it gets you your feet until you're ready to go. Then, uh, graduate to painting up on the stretched canvas. Now, you don't have to wait 10 canvas, uh, 10 canvas boards if you don't want to. You don't have to. You be the judge. You know who you are and how you're painting and what you're doing, you know. But you can always paint over uh, canvas, uh, stretched canvas, too. So just keep that in mind, but it does affect the value. The reason why stretch canvas is very desirable today is the fact that the consumer that purchased your painting has options. They can frame it if they want to, or they can hang it right on the wall without a frame. And that seems to be the very contemporary look today. Um, three eighth inch, three quarter inch is good, but the, when you get going and really start painting and creating good stuff, graduate to one and a half inches. That's the thicker canvas. That is even more desirable to hang on the wall because it's thicker. But they will still, people, it doesn't seem to, if the painting is good, people still will take the three quarter inch. That's fine. I haven't had any problem. I painted some great paintings on three quarters inch as well as one and a half inch. Never got a complaint yet. but. Yeah, you want to get away from canvas board as soon as you can. Um, it's just not the thing in the art world, but it's okay to practice on. And I would always keep a few to experiment on. If you have a new technique or have any questions on um, how colors are going to work or if you're creating a varnish or testing things, have a few of them around to test your ideas on. Let it dry and check it out, you know. Canvas boards are great for that, too. Okay, next question comes from, now I'm going to mispronounce this. Lee sold at in Kanyu. Lee sold at in Kanyu. Hope I pronounced it right. He had to pause the video to say this. Because I think every time I watch you, your voice and the way you speak reminds me of Al Lewis in the role as Grandpa on the monsters it's great anywho back to my coffee and learning how to build an easel she thinks that i sound like grandpa off of the monsters i wish people would stop saying i sound like sky taylor i don't even know the bum <laughs> Okay, next question comes from Jacob Fode. I hope I said that right. Let me have a coffee real quick. <coughs> Pays the drink the best. Sky, would it be necessary to use the binding property if I'm not diluting the paint with water? I'm 100% an artist but have no training besides your videos. Actually, really happy about that. Kind of like before they drink that tap water. I just recently found your page. 
I like your paint since all your tips are to help your paintings be better, not how to paint a waterfall or an ocean scene. The laughs and inspiration are the best. I have done about 25 paintings and I didn't put anything on them before painting since I didn't know about your channel. I paint directly on the white canvas with acrylic colors. Is this going to affect my paintings over time? Well, no, because you're painting in acrylics. See, when you're painting, technically when you buy canvases, most of the time they're already gessoed. So even if you don't gesso, you're good, as long as you paint with acrylics. Acrylics have no acidic properties. In other words, they will not deteriorate the canvas. You can paint directly on it. You can even paint on raw canvas that is not gessoed at all with acrylics has no bearing. However, if you paint with oils, yes, you must, you must, you must gesso because oil paints have acidic properties that deteriorate the fibers, the very fibers of the canvas. And over time, you will have problems. But acrylic paints have no such properties. So you can just paint them. And as far as mixing um, the gel medium, the binding properties with the acrylics, you don't have to do that. I do it for house paints because I know that the artist paints already have special binding properties in them that will lock onto the canvas. It's good. You know, and you don't want to dilute acrylic paints with water. If you've watched any of my tips and tricks, you always want to add a little bit of gel medium in your water and mix it. Even in your spray bottle. Watch the other tips. We're not going to talk about that now to spray it. But to basically you want to uh, add binding properties and never take them away when you're working with acrylics. So I think the rule is 30% uh, 30, 30 water. And after that, that's all you would use. And after that, you're deteriorating your, your acrylics. It's probably 25%. Go 25% water. But I would always mix the gel medium with the water to cut that. You know, you don't want to add just plain water because, yes, it does wreck it. Wreck the binding properties. But uh, no, you don't have to use anything when painting acrylics on canvas. Just go ahead and paint. Now, a lot of people like gesso, and it does. It creates a different uh, uh, medium because what it does is it seals the canvas. You know, it makes it less porous and it gives it a special finish to it. And uh, it, it helps improve the painting, makes painting smoother because you are putting gesso over all the little ridges, all the little bumps on the canvas. It smooths it out and it makes the brush go smoother. And it is a different feel for painting. And as far as canvases go, there's all different types of canvases. There's rough finishes, smooth finishes. Chances are the canvases that you're going to buy at Michael are more of a rough finish. They're not a real smooth, smooth finish. There's a difference. I've even painted on linen. Now that's, that's a whole different trip because it's super, super smooth. And it, it's like it throws you off because you have to learn how to paint a whole different way. I'm not used to having things paint so smooth, but once you paint on linen, it's very expensive to paint on linen. Very, very expensive. But it's a whole different feel than canvas. It, it handles the brush properties different. But, okay, we got sidetracked. Sorry. That's who I am. Ask me one question and I'll tell you everything around it. <laughs> okay, let me have my coffee real quick. Okay. okay, let's move on to the next question. I'm reading it off my computer. Okay. Let's see. Okay, in regards, in regards to tip number one about cleaning brushes. Now, if you watched our tip and trick episodes, uh, this person's referring to my tip number one. Okay. Mo Mapes writes, Sky, I use 91% rubbing alcohol, put my dry brushes, knives, whatever, in a container, and in about five minutes, the dried paint acrylic can be moved a bit 
and smooshed around and the paint starts coming off. Sometimes it can take overnight, but it cleans every bit of the paint out of the brushes and it doesn't seem to damage anything. I will have to try the vinegar, vinegar trick and see how it compares. Thanks for the video, Mo. Okay, there you go. If you have dried brushes, most suggest using 91% rubbing alcohol. Okay, never thought of that. I was kind of being more organic. I didn't want to do something like that, but you know what? If it works, it works. The vinegar is a, a crap shoot. Um, the apple cider vinegar is really strong. I mean, really strong stuff. You can pour it in a, a, a clean a coffee pot with it by pouring it through, and it'll clean out all the shell and buildup. So I used it to clean things, but I didn't try brushes. I, it was a question I had, because I never had a, a dried up brush. If I did, I just threw it away, because the brushes I buy are the chip brushes, and they cost less than 50 cents a piece. And some of them I've had three and four years, so if they get stiff with paint, I just give them a flip. I don't have expensive brushes. I don't believe in buying expensive brushes. I just don't. You can get some great brushes for under 10 bucks, you know, with coupons, five bucks, and we'll get into that another time, but it's the artist, you know, as long as you have a decent brush to paint with. So, so rubbing alcohol. Okay, there's a tip for you, folks. Thanks, Mo. Okay, let me go down here. Jennifer Russell writes, I was wondering you if you have a degree in art. You have a lot of knowledge in art from, from degree or experience. You are a very, very talented artist. Ooh. Your videos are for sure my go-to. Thank you. No, Jennifer, thank you. I really appreciate that a lot. I really do. Uh, as far as a degree goes, well, to be honest with you, I have a third degree. And that's from my mother-in-law when I steal the crispy skin off of the turkey at Thanksgiving. She'll give me that third degree. What that counts for in the art world, I haven't a clue. Well, with that, I will leave you folks. And if you have any questions whatsoever, put them below the video. I answer everybody. I do. I take time to answer every viewer. I do. I've got 100%. I didn't at the beginning, but the last maybe six months, I've been making a conscious effort to answer every single subscriber and viewer. Any question you have, I will answer you. I want to help you. I'm the artist artist. I'm here for you. Um, and with that note, I hope you'll subscribe. And don't forget to watch my tips and tricks videos, which come out Sundays and Wednesdays. I'm trying. Probably miss a few. They're hard to do. And uh, my painting episode, I'm trying to shoot for two a month. So far, I'm one a month. It takes a lot of effort and work. So, but anyway, subscribe. And if you have any questions, please ask. I'll do my best to answer them. And have a wonderful day. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm going to have this sip of coffee on you. Good coffee. Thank you. Talk to you soon.